Basically, anyone interacting online is a digital citizen. Jules here. I've graduated high school and my vlog has really taken off. It's also really great to have contributors to my page, like Live Guy and Good Vibes and Archie from Project Rocket. Sometimes it can seem pretty overwhelming when we see this hate playing out online and we think, well, what can I do? Or what can I do without getting involved or being targeted next? Just got an offer from a huge brand to wear their gear in my post. Followers be max. So unfortunately, there are plenty of examples of ways people can be irresponsible or harsh online. I'm sure you can think of someone in your newsfeed who writes really hurtful comments on other people's posts, or you've seen someone being trolled on YouTube for their videos before. Or recently I saw an account set up directly to hate on one particular person and to put it simply, it kind of sucks. But that power that comes with being able to hate on other people online, we can also use to challenge it and shut that hate down as well. So while it's easy to be irresponsible online, it's also really easy to be responsible and to stand up for others if they need our help. This is a disaster. I'll say. Well, didn't you know they've got a refusing sweatshops in Bangladesh? No, I had no idea. I wish I'd known it was Activate Life. I would have told you. What am I going to do? Just be honest. Post an apology. Let them know you didn't do your research. You made a mistake and you're sorry. If you own up to it and be accountable, there'll be no more ammunition and the hate brigade will move on. You're right. Speaking of... Still going on? Yep. He keeps posting it in a wonderful array of variations. I'm sorry, but I'm proud you didn't retaliate. You did delete that pic of him, right? 
Yeah. Good. Guess that video I showed you helped. Yeah. I watched a few more, actually. There was one I really liked about how not to be a douche online. <laughs> Want to see? Sure. Well, for me, I like to use a bit of an exercise. I like to ask myself, well, how do I want to be defined in just three words? And if you do it yourself, your three words are probably the values that are most important to you. And if you live by those values online, there's a really good chance it's going to mean you're treating other people with respect. just wanted to apologise for my recent Active 8 life post. I had no idea of their practices. Definitely not something I support. Hashtag sorry to have let you guys down. Hashtag taking a stand. Hashtag amends. Hashtag lessons learned. Hey there, just wanted to send a personal apology for my Active 8 life post. I should have done my research. Are we all good? You really faced the firing squad today. You okay? Hey, yeah, much better, thanks. So sorry that happened to you. People can be so awful online. Guess we all have to be careful. Thanks, you're so sweet. I should have been more careful. You're pretty savvy. How could you not know they use sweatshops? Well, I knew it could be a possibility, but I didn't realise it was such a big deal. I got carried away with their offer. Well, glad it's all over now. Keep up the good work. Chat soon, kiss kiss. So we know that sometimes people feel like it's easier to be harsh or disrespectful online because we're behind a screen, but it's important to remember that there's another person on the other end of that screen. And a consequence of being extra harsh is that someone's probably gonna be pretty upset by it. It could affect that person's self-esteem. Perhaps it could have really serious impacts on that person's mental health.
So sometimes people feel like they can get away with being extra harsh online because I suppose there's a sense of power that comes from being behind a screen, but for anyone who's seen Spider-Man, you'll know with great power comes great responsibility. So while there is that power to be extra negative and extra harsh online, we can also use that power to shut down hate if we see it happen or challenge people whose behavior that we know is really, really wrong. It's just up to us to decide how we're gonna use the power of the online world. It's a matter of showing a bit of empathy online and remembering that our actions do directly affect other people, even if they just come up as a username. So there's always something we can do to help someone who's having a hard time online based on our own confidence levels. If you're a really confident person, maybe you want to stand up to the hate by writing something really short and simple like the word dislike to shut it down without giving them any ammunition. Or you might just want to write something really positive about the person who's being targeted. Often when we talk about online bullying, there tends to be a focus on the technological side of things, but really with online bullying, we're just talking about the social issue of bullying playing out in an online space. So trying to figure out why online bullying happens is pretty daunting. And I think really we should be asking, well, why are people giving other people a hard time? What are they actually getting out of it? And personally, when it comes to online hate, I think people are typically just doing it for attention, right? It might be someone who's not totally happy with what's going on in their life. They're looking for reaction. It could be someone who's really bored and lonely. Whatever it looks like for them, it's important not to take that on board. And even if we're interacting online, have our crew offline that we can go to for support if we need their help. I'm sorry I didn't tell you the whole story. Please forgive me. What are you doing? I don't get you. I made a mistake. I really need you. I can't deal with this. Talk to you tomorrow. He's not gonna stop. What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs>